choosing a primary school is a big decision and can often feel quite daunting. Unfortunately, with the current restrictions in place, this has been made even more difficult for parents and carers. Along with the other Trailden Government schools, at Kosciuszko Street Primary School, we would like to support you with your decision making by providing you with a quick question and answer video which contains questions asked by actual parents who have a child starting their primary school journey next year. We have also included questions which are often asked when we have run tours of our school on site in previous years. It is our aim to provide you with a stress-free transition which is adaptable to our current climate and whatever changes come our way. We hope to create a sense of confidence in our ability to provide your child with a warm, supportive and fun start to their first year of primary school. We know only too well how important it is for your child to be supported through the nerves, the excitement and the impatience that children feel as they embark on the adventure that is school. For those of you who are watching this within our virtual question and answer meeting, you'll have the opportunity to ask questions at the conclusion of the video. For those of you who are watching this after the event, a transcript of the questions you, that have been asked will be included on our website. So, let's get started with a warm welcome from our school president, David Clark. Hi, my name is David Clark. I'm school council president here at Kosciuszko Street Primary School. We've had three kids come through the school here and we've all loved being part of the Cosy community. Welcome to Cosy's Q&A video. I am Riel and I am school captain. It feels like such a long time since I started prep, but I remember it as being a fabulous year. It was full of fun, friends and warmth from my teachers. I remember being encouraged to have a go at things that I was nervous about and being supported while I did it. Getting a high five from my friends after I experienced success was the best. While I didn't know it at the time, I grew in confidence so quickly that year. I love the expansive grounds at Cosy. Which areas can my child play in? All right, we are very lucky at Cosy. We've got great grounds and it's all fenced with gates that we can close to keep everyone safe. Um, we've got three areas and for the first couple of weeks we keep the juniors, the preps, in the junior playground area. This is encourages them to interact with their peers rather than going off with the older kids. So that keeps them um, safe and then there's teachers there, usually the prep teachers, to help supervise the safety of them and their well-being then gradually we move them into other areas and that's where they could catch up with their buddies as well as maybe some of the siblings as well. And in each of these areas, um, there are staff assigned and we wear beautiful orange fur tops, which we all love to wear. And this just makes it easier for the students to see a teacher if maybe there's a bit of a problem in the playground. Do you have a buddy program at COSI? Your child will be buddied up with a senior student they will be able to catch up out in the yard at recess and lunchtime. There will also be a timetabled, there will also be timetabled buddy activities throughout the year. Hi everyone, my name is Paul Murray and I'm the assistant principal here at COSI. One of the many questions we get from new parents is how do we manage behaviour here at school? At COSI, we aim to provide our students with a positive and safe learning environment. We believe that providing all students with appropriate behaviour supports and strategies that they are more likely to achieve academic and social success. Students learn appropriate behaviour in the same way they learn to read, through instruction, practice, feedback and encouragement. The foundation of our positive behaviour process is the four school-wide expectations. Be respectful, be responsible, be resilient and be ready. To support the teaching of our behaviour expectations, staff have worked collaboratively with our junior school counsellors and student leaders to create a behaviour matrix. In every classroom at COSI, the expectations are explicitly taught to the students. When students demonstrate these behaviours, students are acknowledged and the behaviours reinforced. Throughout the school year, students will be taught how to behave according to the four expectations. Teachers will help students learn what the expectations look and sound like in every setting during the school day. These lessons will be taught and reinforced throughout the school year and become a regular part of our instructional program and the language that we use here at COSI. 
The positive behaviour matrix is a detailed description of the expected behaviours in each setting of the school. For example, in all learning areas we find ways to solve challenges we face. It shows resilience when we persist with challenging tasks. The matrix is posted in prominent areas around the school and in our classrooms. The expectations for different areas are posted around the school. When students demonstrate school-wide expectations, staff will acknowledge their success using positive reinforcement. This may include verbally recognising and reinforcing the behaviour or by giving the students a yard ticket or a dojo point. When giving a ticket or dojo points, staff will indicate which school-wide expectation the student was demonstrating along with a clear explanation of what was successful about that behaviour. Even with clear expectations and positive reinforcement, sometimes children will misbehave. To address inappropriate behaviour and to monitor the types of behaviours that occur, a student behaviour record sheet has been implemented. Discipline issues are divided into minor, major and severe behaviours. Information from these records is collected to identify particular areas for teaching and whether there are students who need some extra support. We are proactive around bullying and put in place procedures to deal with these issues as quickly as we can. It's important for us to know if there are any issues happening, so feel free to have a chat with your teacher if you have any concerns. Where do I drop my child off in the morning? So initially when they're first starting school in the first few days and weeks, we drop Jake off in his classroom with his teacher. Um, and that was really nice for us to be able to build rapport with the teacher. Um, and for the kids to be able to show us where they sit and who their friends are. Um, and then from there, the kids become more uh, familiar and established with their routines um, and where we were encouraged to sort of um, drop them maybe at the door um, and just increase our distance. Um, but in a way that we were both sort of comfortable and confident that the kids knew what they were doing and they were happy. Um, and then from there, um, with the teacher's guidance and support, we went from sort of dropping Jake at the door to dropping him off somewhere um, out in the playground. And then as COVID became um, prevalent, we ended up dropping him just at the gate. Um, there was always a teacher there meeting him, whether it be his classroom teacher or Chelsea or Paul um, or another teacher there to sort of direct them and put them in, in the right direction, which was always reassuring for us and for Jake. Um, but yeah, that seemed to be the way that um, Cosy does it and it's a really, really good system. Where do I collect my child at the end of the day? At the end of the day for the first month of school, the school day ends at 1.30, so just after the children have eaten lunch. I began by picking them up from their classroom um, which was good just to touch base with the teachers and see how their day was. Once I felt they were a little bit more confident, we organised another area to meet, which at Cosy it's great. There's beautiful shaded areas um, and lots of seating. So we were able to choose a spot that suited us as a family with parking and find a space to pick the children up. There was also always someone, um, a staff member at the gate, which really helped support the children. If I wasn't there right at the bell, um, just reassure them I was on my way, which was great. How do I communicate with my child's teacher? So with the communication with your child's teacher, um, I found both years Jake's teachers to be so approachable. Um, the office staff are great. All of uh, the staff at COSI have been so, so good with communication. Um, if there was an instance where I had to um, collect Jake in a hurry from school or there was some sort of problem or emergency that I had to get him from school. Um, I know I'd just call the office um, and they would facilitate that um, in getting Jake to where I was going to pick him up from. Um, if it was something not urgent or just something I sort of wanted to go over with the teacher, then email I found was always um, really good. You know, teachers very responsive to email. Um, or often I'd be able to, you know, if it was something really quick, just mention it, um, you know, at drop off or pick up. Um, but if it was anything more um, in depth, then I'd sort of arrange a time to meet with them. Um, and that could be done via email or um, there's also their diaries. They get a diary, um, which is really good 
for communication. Um, yeah, whether it be an appointment that needs to be made with a teacher or something like that, then they could always write in the diary. Uh, and just a really good means of communication. Um, you know, I always found it really nice in the first little while, Jake or Jake's teacher would write cute little messages, you know, Jake had a really good day today or um, just things like that to reassure us that Jake was settling in okay. What should I do if my child is upset at drop-off times? I would suggest that you have a chat to the teacher or the integration aid as soon as possible. They will find a way to um, work with your child and what's going to work best to help them settle. Um, it's best to let them take their hand, give them kisses and waves really quickly and then the school will call and let you know how your child settled. I've been given the question, what is the core curriculum and programs in place for preps? Um, like all Victorian government schools, teachers at COSI plan a curriculum using the Victorian curriculum. So all prep students, they engage in a daily two-hour literacy block. During this time, students are taught skills such as phonemic awareness and phonics. These skills provide a foundation for reading and writing. Students engage in the Sounds Right program every day. Um, and this is the teaching of clear and effective phonological strategies which teach children to read, write and spell. Um, students who require extra support with literacy are offered intervention as determined by their classroom teacher and our intervention leader. Depending on the needs of the students, they're offered more time to master the skills being introduced with the right amount of support. Students are also taught numeracy daily through the use of hands-on materials which are used to solve real life problems. They're immersed in authentic experiences involving number, shape and measurement. At COSI, all students from prep to six, they participate in what we call specialist subjects. So these are the subject areas which are taught by teachers other than their own. So at COSI, we offer students uh, the Stephanie Alexander Kitchen Garden Program, which is where the kids get to, um, they get to get into the garden, do some um, gardening plants and seedlings, and then they harvest that food. And from that, they're then able to um, create some pretty delicious meals. And then they'll um, you know, share those meals within the kitchen garden room. It's actually a really nice warm program. They also um, engage in physical education and art. Hi everyone, I'm back to answer some questions about the COSI school uniform. The COSI uniform creates a sense of collective and individual pride in students and their identification as part of the COSI family. It minimises peer pressure and has been developed within the Department of Education and Training's framework and through consultation with parents and students. Our uniform is very easy to source and has a large range of options. It includes navy blue or white polo shirts, navy wind cheaters, jackets, trackies or cotton drill pants navy shorts or basketball shorts, skirts and blue and white gingham dresses. We also have legionnaire or broad rimmed navy hats which must be worn in terms one and four. Where do I buy a uniform? Cosy uniforms can be purchased from Belize in Seymour Street, Trelgan. Um Hats and iron-on logos are available to be purchased at our school office um, but you don't have to wear logoed items, you can just wear plain navy and plain white t-shirts and wind cheaters. Um, newly enrolled preps receive a free hat at the start of the year. This question asks, will the classes be prep or prep one? Oh, this is a tough question for this time of the year. The answer to this question is always dependent on the number of enrolments we receive in any given year. Uh, as a school, we've had classes of straight preps as well as prep ones and can honestly say that both structures successfully support the learning and social emotional wellbeing of all students. Teachers work collectively to cater for the needs of all students, regardless of which grade they're in. Um, we're really proud of the way that we differentiate learning for all students and provide extra support for those who require extension or those who require extra time to learn, learn the skills that are being taught. Um, it is always our aim, regardless of the grade structure, to provide students with a safe and supportive learning environment where they are nurtured to succeed. This question asks, what transition processes are in place for prep starting in 2021? 
So our plan for our transition for this year, um, it really does need to be a bit fluid at the moment until we know more about the ongoing restrictions for COVID-19. Um, in preparedness for that, we've made a plan for a remote transition program as well as an on-site program. So we're aiming that regardless of the mode of delivery, that these will occur for five weeks and that they will begin the week of the 9th of November. So fingers crossed we're all on site, um, but if that doesn't happen, we do have a, a plan um, and we will be in contact with you to let you know um, how that's going to play out. Now, I know firsthand about how exciting and scary it can be to have a child start school. I have three sons that attend COSI already and my youngest son will be starting in prep next year. So I'm sure I'll get to know many of you parents outside of the classroom. Now, um, there may be tears next year on that first day. I will feel, I feel your pain. Trust me, I know what you might be going through. There are some things that we can do to help make that transition a little bit smoother though. So some of the things that I'll be doing with my own son and some of the things that the school recommends is that you perhaps visit the school and let your child play on the playgrounds. Maybe you'd like to kick the football on the oval. Just have a little, get a, get, get your, allow your child to get a feel for the school as this will be their new learning environment. They'll be spending a lot of time here next year. Um, another thing that you can do is we, it's really important that you help your child to become more independent. There will be things that they'll need to do without your help, such as putting their shoes and socks on, um, opening their lunchbox, opening packets of food, taking their water bottle lid off to fill it up with water. All of those things that we kind of forget about, we need our children to be independent in doing that. It makes it much easier for us teachers if those kids come to school with those skills. They need to be able to take their own jumper off when they get hot. So let's help um, foster their independence by encouraging them to do those things by themselves. Um, it's also a great idea to read books about beginning school. There are lots of great uh, books out there that you could borrow from the library. Uh, about and that might help normalize some of the feelings that your child might be having they might be feeling a little bit anxious and that will help them realize that that is completely normal to have those feelings that in, inside those books there might be um, topics such as meeting new teachers and and making friends and we can help our children by thinking about all those exciting things about school because there's lots of exciting things that happen at school um, to practice the morning routines once you have your school uniform and your school bag towards the end of the year you might like to practice getting dressed in the morning as if you're getting ready for school and packing everything into your school bag and practice carrying the school bag around those routines can help um, if you know any parents who have children starting at COSI next year it might be a great idea to organize some play dates with them I will be doing that with my son because I know a couple of parents that have children starting here as well so organize some play dates and last but not least, we need to make sure that we are positive. Okay, this is a massive milestone in your child's life. We need to make sure that we stay positive and we encourage them throughout this big step and, and embrace the child's excitement. Okay, all right, have fun getting ready for school and I will see you next year. Bye.